This is a story about a dude named Lane. He moved to the mainland and bought one place to stay. And then one day he went and tried to rent them out. And then he became one real investor man. Hey guys, this is Lane with the Simple Passive Cash Flow Podcast. I've got a short talk today on cost segregation. Talked a lot about recently and I wanted to bring my buddy, John Collins, on the line. Hey there, John. Yeah, hey Lane, how you doing? Hey, so John's in one of my mentorship groups and one of his side gigs is this cost segregation. He's the expert in it and I thought we'd, uh, instead of I mean, just talk about these concepts, I thought I'd bring the expert on the line. So John, maybe kind of t- talk us through like, you know, what's the cost segregation? How does it get us at those tax saving? Yeah, sure. I think most people here listening probably are aware that depreciations are really nice lever for most real estate investors. That's one of the the four or five ways that people mostly talk about that real estate puts money in their pocket. What a lot of people aren't aware of is that cost segregation is basically like depreciation on steroids. It just takes it down another level and can accelerate a lot of those tax savings in the early years of ownership. So that's basically what cost segregation is. You're you're taking your depreciation a lot sooner than you would otherwise. All right. And the way that you guys do that is not the CPA doing that. It's an engineer or architecture firm going in and kind of slicing up the property into more components, which are then line item. And some things are depreciated a lot quicker, some things longer, but overall it's more than just kind of the blanket 27 and a half years or 39 years deduction. Right, exactly. I mean, typically a, a CPA can do the basic depreciation calculation, which is the, the building less the land value. But then once you go beyond that, it's it's pretty unlikely that they can go much farther than maybe some uh, basic appliances and a few other things. Because the IRS actually requires someone who's got construction experience, engineering background, or architecture background to come in and do the actual cost segregation study which is a much more thorough, much more detailed look at the building and separating out all the different components into the different depreciation schedules. So an engineer, they're going to be familiar with construction drawings and the different cost base of the costing schedules used uh, across the industry that are recognized by the IRS. And, you know, they're actually following the guidelines that the IRS puts out for cost segregation the uh, the tax audit techniques and that is basically kind of a roadmap for putting together this information in a way that's recognizable by the IRS and immediately puts tax savings in your pocket as the investor. Yeah, and this is kind of called um, bonus depreciation too. I think that's kind of the buzzword going around, and you know it's a little bit misleading. Depreciation, you with this cost segregation, you can kind of front load it. And it's not really like you're getting more deductions. You're just getting them earlier in the, the pay schedule. Instead of taking it throughout the 27 or and a half years or 39 years evenly, you can front load it a, a lot of times, especially with the new tax laws and get a lot of it in those first few years, which, you know, as investors, we always look at the time value of money. So it's kind of getting your deductions up in sort of year one in our example that we'll go through and instead of in the future. It's, it kind of is money in your pocket, but technically it's you're going to get the same amount of deductions. Yeah, I mean, there's a number of reasons why cost segregation would be advantageous for a property owner. A lot of times when you acquire a property, the first year or two of holding it, it, it you know, you're going through a stabilization period depending on what your business strategy or model is. So being able to relieve some of that financial pressure in the early years is a really nice tailwind for a lot of people if they're going to be doing upgrades or maybe the building's partially occupied or whatever. So being able to take those deductions earlier versus having to wait for them can relieve up a lot of financial pressure in the early years. And then also, I mean, the time value of money, I think we use a 5% net present value calculation to show like the discounted value by taking that money sooner versus waiting to get those deductions later on. Um, You know, just like what your strategy is, some people, uh, they really want to fine tune and dial in their, their financial picture and get their dollars working as hard as possible. And this is one way to really do that. All right. And as a limited partner, you know, a lot of, that's one of the reasons why you go in on a big deal, because at a certain point, these things are, they're more of a, a big item, big property item to kind of start doing it. Uh, what would you say kind of the cutoff is, John, that because these cost segregation studies, 
I mean, they're kind of cheap. They're like three, six grand. What, what's kind of the cutoff in building size that these things kind of make sense? Yeah, that's a great question because I run across a lot of people that they're, they've heard of cost segregation. They're familiar with it, but they just think that it's only for really big buildings, really big commercial buildings, and it can't apply to any smaller stuff that they might hold in their own portfolio or maybe a smaller deal that they're investing in on the side. And that's really not the case. Um, I think where some of the confusion comes is there's actually six different IRS approved cost segregation methods. And those methods are, they vary very much in terms of level of detail. The method that our company uses, there's, we actually use the two most detailed methods and we're able to get down like in the nitty gritty. I mean, we're looking at studs, we're looking at nuts, bolts, as low of detail as you can go. And that allows us to get down to building values that are about $200,000 and up. We can make the numbers work pretty well. And we don't even engage a client unless we can guarantee uh, at least a 300% return on their, their service fee that they're paying us. In order for us to keep our margin and keep our, our service guarantee in place, about $200,000 is as low as we can go typically. I've seen a couple that are a little bit lower, but generally we say $200,000 to be on the safe side. And then the, the higher up you go on value, it just accelerates. Usually once we break the uh, million dollar property value, that's when the the client really starts to see a, a ton of yield on their service fee because it's it's not proportional. It doesn't take as much. For about the same amount of cost, we can get a lot more tax benefit for them. Right, right. So for your little turnkey rental, it probably won't make sense, but um, definitely on the bigger stuff. I mean, these things are free estimates you guys give, and we, we'll, we'll give out your guys' information after. Yeah, so I think one thing, a lot of people that are one to four unit owners, they don't think that they are in the, the running for benef- to benefit from cost segregation, but a duplex, triplex, fourplex, in most cases, in most markets, uh, we can make the numbers work on that. Right. And another thing that makes sense, if you're more of one of those like legacy buy and hold investors that to keep it, the longer you keep it, the more it makes sense. Right. So this is the K1 form for a lot of, you know, limited partners in deals. All you really care about are the two lines, the number one, the ordinary business income. And then I think it's number, number two, the business losses. And that's where the depreciation will come on. And in the form, you'll also get that bonus depreciation, as people call it. This is that cost segregation. So if you're going into a deal, I would always ask, hey, you know, just double check. Hey, are you guys doing a cost seg on this thing? Because it just makes makes sense. And that's kind of why you're going on, on a bigger deal, so you can take advantages of its size and get economies of scale. Here's one of the buildings that John ran for me on my 52 unit. It's a Three million dollar purchase price or value. So you can see on there on the top line, kind of did this for us for free on this estimate. He can probably do one of these for you guys. You know, the building costs were like 2.6 million. And I guess you guys figured like the land was 400 grand. I mean, it was out kind of in Iowa. So I guess the land isn't worth very much out there. (laughs) And then you kind of showed us here that the fee is on the right side. So these cost segregations are not free, but you know, they're relatively cheap. And those are the cost savings that you figure that we would get in other and highlighted. So in the first year, we'd see $130,000 based on pretty regular or the 40% tax bracket, right? It's kind of how you guys figure that. Here is how, how that kind of got broke down over the years. I know it's small. You may have to pause the video and zoom in here. But if you look at the, the, the left highlighted side here, just to the left of it, that's the, that would be the normal depreciation schedule, how we would be deducting about $94,000 every year for 28 years, 29 years or so. And what the cost segregation would do with the new tax laws is that we'd get the bonus depreciation after in year one. And that's really front loads those deductions. Some things just aren't consumable in a podcast audio format like reports, investing trends, and my own personal investing happenings. Go to simplepassivecashflow.com backslash club to sign up for the Hui Deal Pipeline Club to get the monthly email, The Journey to Simple Passive Cashflow. Yeah, if, I, if you don't mind, I'll jump in. I mean, bonus depreciation is really quite amazing. So cost segregation is already taking your normal depreciation and making it faster. And then bonus depreciation is just ramping it up even faster. In most cases, 
the items that you're segregating out, you can depreciate the entire 100% of the value in the year you buy the building, i.e. put it into service. And that's huge. It's basically taking stuff from a 39-year depreciation schedule to a one-year, which is like, that's just amazing. That's kind of the essence of what bonus depreciation is. I mean, this year is like the first year we've had 100% in a while. And uh, basically, you can d- d- uh, depreciate it all in the year that you acquire it. So that is huge. All right. One thing to point out, it sounds really nice, but if you're only holding onto the property for five years, you got a got depreciation recapture in five years. But in a way, it's like you're getting a free loan for that big, you're getting the depreciation, you're getting the tax write-off. In a way, you're getting that as like a tax-free loan for however long you own the property. Exactly. I think we want to go over a few examples here. Maybe something off the top of your head, John, to kind of bring this to life that you've kind of recently, you've recently found in your travels. Yeah, so I'm in the middle of a project right now with a client. Uh, It's going to be a $3 million acquisition, roughly. And just to give some real quick numbers, they are looking at over a $266,000 tax credit here in 2018 based on that building at that purchase price. And what the cool part is the the buyer has been in negotiation with the seller and they've been a couple hundred thousand dollars apart on a purchase price. But by them doing cost segregation here right upon acquisition, they're going to basically allow them to step into this building for about the same price that they were originally negotiating for. Cost segregation is almost like an instant rebate in this in this example. Yes, this is kind of the reason why you this, these cost segregations are pretty cheap. They range from about three to six thousand dollars mo- most cases. And I don't know if you guys, John, did you used to play video games when you were a kid, like Grand Turismo <laughs> or anything like that? Uh, you know, I played some uh, some Atari and some Nintendo. If that <laughs> kind of dates myself, I don't know. But <laughs> so I mean, there was this game out there when I was a teenager called Grand Turismo. It was a racing game where you suit your car up. And, you know, you, you, you race and you get money. One of the, the upgrades on these cars was this dinky little computer chip that was like $1,500, you know, where all these other upgrades are like thousands and thousands of dollars. The, the computer chip is kind of like this cost segregation thing. It's like a no-brainer. Like, why would you not pay this small amount of money to get this big bump? You know, it's just That's what I kind of see it as the no-brainer. I, I don't know. If, why, why don't people do this more often? Like it just doesn't make any sense to me. Why you yeah, there, there's a couple other benefits too I want to share with your audience. Actually, the IRS would prefer that you do a cost segregation because it's a more detailed approach to the whole accounting of the asset. Basically, once a cost segregation study has been done, you're actually less likely to get audited. And in the event that you would be audited, you're actually can rest assured that your documentation is that which it should be versus we have a lot of clients that come on and we'll, we'll take a look at their existing property, their existing tax asset detail or their depreciation schedule. And in most cases, like we we do a lot of corrections. Like it's pretty rare we find existing depreciation schedules that have been done correctly to this point. So that's one thing. The outcome of a cost segregation study is like we get all that cleaned up and sorted out. And that becomes like another layer of value for your property, especially when you go to sell it, because now you can pass that information on to the new buyer and they can kind of pick up where you left off versus you know, having a depreciation schedules that are incorrectly and done kind of willy nilly, which is what we see almost all the time. It's amazing. You'd be so surprised what we see from professional CPA firms that just haven't done it correctly or didn't put a lot of thought into it. And really that's what the risk is from the audit is if they were to look at, you know, some of these existing depreciation schedules that haven't been done correctly and don't have the level of detail. That's just another reason that it's a good, good practice to have. Right. And, and a lot of these, and it doesn't make sense why a lot of these CPA firms wouldn't go out and have their client do this. But I guess from their point of view, it kind of makes things a little more complicated. I mean, they're not really getting any revenue from bringing you guys on. It just kind of makes their job a little bit more of a headache. I, I think as the client or and even as a limited partner on a deal, you might want to tap the shoulder of your lead saying, hey, are you guys getting a cost leg done? Hey, here's John's number if you, if you aren't. Yeah, exactly. And I, I've heard different reasons why 
the current situation might be. I mean, I've heard that when CPAs are going through their training, like they don't even spend much time on the cost segregation topic is like one reason, like they're just not coming out of the schools with that level of knowledge or insight. And then the other big distinction is that do a cost seg study, you have to have construction, engineering, or architecture background. And it's pretty rare you find a CPA that has either or any of those credentials. So there's just kind of a natural divide there. But on the other end of the spectrum, you know, you have folks that are very sophisticated and partnered up with firms and they have cost segregation studies done all the time. It's just part of their normal standard practice. But that's that's generally not the, the case for most people I see. It's kind of they're either on one end of the spectrum or the other, and we're trying to bridge that gap and provide education and let people know that uh, there's quite a bit of benefit out there that could be taken advantage of. Right. Yeah. And, and that's just something to think about for limited partners out there. You know, you're going to get a K-1 back. A couple of my deals I bought in the later part of the year, we did cost segregation on, on and, you know, we didn't make any money because a lot of the deals, it takes like a quarter or two to start seeing the cash flow after stabilizing the deal, even if it is a stabilized property. But because we did the bonus depreciation and, and a big chunk, I mean, I saw a few three thousand dollars of depreciation just for like one month of ownership pre- the previous year. So it's real stuff. And I don't know if I don't know how it works. I mean you have to talk to a CPA how it works, how the de- that depreciation cancels out the income on that K one. If it rolls to your uh, your personal, if you know you didn't have any income on that, that individual K one or that deal. Something to something to think about for an ask a CPA. I've gotten different answers when I ask the CPAs. When I ask them that question, they kind of look at look at me with the crossed eyes. You know, the ones that go to the local RIAs that I kind of just try and stump them with this question. Um, <laughs> make sure you got a good one, and you know, and make make us understand what they're trying to do here. I mean, a lot of times you're the limit partner, but you've got, you're, you're the client, and you definitely have to let them know what you you want done and kind of know what's what's fair. If not, they'll just do the easy route which isn't always aligned with your best interests. Thanks for joining us, uh, John. Um, John Collins' information is up in there. I'd probably say, you know, shoot him an email is probably the best thing. You know, he's a busy guy, so he does a lot of these, and he can kind of whip these up, these estimates up pretty quickly for you guys. But, yeah, we'll see you guys next time. And if you guys want more information, go to simplepassivecashflow.com backslash cost seg for uh, this webinar and the slides for this. And um, also throw up an article that, John and I wrote together up there too. All right, John. Appreciate it. Cool. Man. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks. See you. This website offers very general information concerning real estate for investment purposes. Every investor situation is unique. Always seek the services of licensed third party appraisers and inspectors to verify the value and condition of any property you intend to purchase. Use the services of professional title and escrow companies and licensed tax, investment, and or legal advisor before relying on any information contained herein. Information is not guaranteed as in every investment there is risk. The content found here is just my opinion and things change and I reserve the right to change my mind. Above all else, do your own analysis and think for yourself because in the end, you are the only person who is going to look out for your best interests.